In the heart of the African savanna is a unique stretch of water, the Kazinga Channel. It's paradise for some of Africa's giants, hippos. There's everything here they could want. Water, food, and plenty of company. There are also family fallouts, noisy neighbors, and a constant battle to be leader. It's a close-knit, complex community, and mothers have to guard their young at all times. Paradise is not all it seems. and forests helped to shape one of the world's greatest wildlife refuges. The Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda. The Kazinga Channel winds through the park and splits it in two. It's 41 kilometers long and links two huge lakes. The channel's gentle current and the food nearby provide a perfect habitat for many animals. But one in particular has made it their own. It's September, the height of the dry season. A flock of cormorants tries to combat the heat. They face the wind and flutter their throats. If they can cool the blood capillaries in their throats, it helps keep their body temperature down. Their neighbors, the pelicans, are trying to do just the same thing. The Zynga Channel teems with birds. And elephants are frequent visitors too. They need to drink around 90 liters of water a day. So the channel is a lifeline. A herd of African buffalo takes full advantage as well. But some of the Kazinga's residents are keeping a lower profile. The channel is also home to some other giants. Hippopotamus. Above water, hippos are an imposing sight. Their jaws stretch to 150 degrees, and their teeth can reach 20 centimeters long. Hippos live in herds called bloats and often gather near the banks. In the shallows, they can stand up, and that's a big advantage. For animals which live in water, hippos are surprisingly poor swimmers. The Kazinga Channel is home to many bloats.
Usually there are 10 to 20 hippos in each one, and space is at a premium. Sometimes just 50 meters separates rival groups. From the air, it's easier to see just how many hippos live here. And for every one which can be seen above water, many more are submerged. For its size, the Kazinga Channel has one of the highest densities of hippos in the world. Around 600 bloats live along this 41 kilometer stretch of water. This is one of the Kazinga's prime territories. And this is the bloat which has claimed it as their home. When their bodies are semi-submerged, it's hard to tell males from females until they start falling out. It's usually the males who fight. This bloat has seven males, 10 females, and 13 calves. And one hippo towers over them all, the dominant male. He's the leader, and he has a head for power. The size of a hippo's head is a sign of strength. Some hippos live for over 40 years, and the dominant male shows the signs of old age deep battle scars under his eyes. But he still has plenty of fight left in him. One of the young males starts fighting. The leader goes to investigate. His deep, throaty growl is a warning. The young troublemaker ducks for cover. He's not hiding. Raising and lowering his head is a sign of submission. By deferring to his leader, the young hippo should be able to keep his place in the bloat. The dominant male demands respect. Another young hippo swims by. As he passes, he splashes water over his leader. It's another sign of deference. Hippo tails are shaped like an oar, and the perfect shape for flicking water. It's a bright, hot day, and as usual, the bloat is relaxing close to shore. The dominant male makes his way onto land and reveals his true size. He's over three meters long and his spindly legs are under a lot of pressure. He weighs close to three tons. A gang of calves follow him. They're barely 
half his size. A smaller calf sticks by its mother's side. Females give birth every two to three years and keep their calves close until they reach around seven years of age. This calf is the baby of the bloat. It's only about four months old and hasn't got any teeth. It's still suckling. Calves survive solely on their mother's milk until they're around eight months old. The mother is always on guard. One of the males moves too close for comfort, so the mother uses her body as a shield to protect her baby. During the day when hippos come onto land, they stay close to the water's edge and eat. They survive by eating grass. A closer look inside their mouth shows they have far fewer teeth than a lot of other grass eaters. They simply rip it out of the ground instead. Their broad, flat mouths are designed so they can tear off a lot in one go. They wander the banks like giant lawnmowers, eating everything in their path. The baby chews grass too, but it's not eating it. It's practicing how to eat by copying the adults. Now the calves have fed, it's playtime. These calves are about a year old. Although they don't have teeth yet, they use their jaws in shows of strength. They wrestle with their mouths. but physical exertion in the heat soon takes its toll. Grooming is a gentler form of bonding. A combination of warm sunshine and a full stomach sends most of the hippos to sleep. That seems to be it for the afternoon. The whole bloat relaxes. All except one. The baby's mother is wide awake and on guard as usual. It's been two hours since the hippos came ashore. The sun burns brightly as the temperature peaks. For mother and baby, it's all too much. Hippo skin is thin, and if they spend too long in the sun, it starts to crack and blister. 
It's one reason they can never go too far from the water in the daytime. Back in the channel, mother and baby are still inseparable. The baby stands on its mother's back. Hitching a ride helps it stay safe. Hidden underwater, the mother stays as still as possible. Coming up for air means a chance to keep an eye open for danger. But the youngster soon gets restless. The baby will continue to suckle until it's about eight months old. It's already a good swimmer and diver. It's ducked underwater to feed. The Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda is a wildlife haven. 95 species of mammal live here. 605 different species of bird. And there is no other place where so many hippos live in such close confinement. They are found in other parts of Africa, but conditions in the park are extra special. Much of the reason why has to do with the land that surrounds it. The Great Rift Valley. It stretches over 6,000 kilometers across Africa. Queen Elizabeth National Park is to the west of the valley. The Ruinzori Mountains are at the north of the park. They rise over 5,000 meters and help supply the park with water. The mountains are littered with glaciers. Meltwater from the glaciers gathers at the bottom of the valley, along with rain. It feeds the lakes and the Kazinga Channel. The lie of the land also plays an important role. The two lakes connected by the Kazinga Channel are in a flat area. There is barely any incline, which is why the flow of water along the channel is so gentle. And for hippos, a slow current is vital. They like to submerge themselves so only their eyes, ears and nose break the surface. This makes it difficult for predators to spot them. If they're in water that moves quickly, water fills their nostrils and they can't breathe properly. On top of that, if the current is too strong, young calves could get swept away. Hippos in other parts of Africa usually live in parts of rivers which have a slow current or in shallow lakes. The mother and baby couldn't have a better home.
Another day dawns in Queen Elizabeth Park. The bloat slowly starts to stir. In the shallows, the baby plays happily. Suddenly, the peace is shattered. Her dada Ibis are noisy neighbors, and the hippos don't like it. For such big animals, they seem easily spooked. The baby doesn't seem to know what to make of the visitors. And Ibis are just the start of the bloat's problems. The baby is first to spot more uninvited guests. And this crowd could be a much bigger problem. The elephants start to drink close to the bloat. Hippos eye them cautiously. But the elephants don't just want a drink. They want a bath, too. If the hippos get flustered, it could make the elephants more excitable. Elephants are twice as heavy as hippos, and they're boisterous bathers. All the bloat can do is watch. But one of them could be in harm's way. The baby is dangerously close. Mother comes to the rescue again. She hides her baby beneath her body, just in the nick of time. One elephant seems to have a point to prove. The hippos retreat, but the elephant doesn't give up. rarely last long, but it's a tense waiting game. The elephant seems intent on causing chaos. Eventually, calm is restored. The mother watches warily as the troublemakers disappear. The bloat regroups under their leader's watchful eye. Night closes in. But for the hippos, the day isn't over. Excitement starts to spread throughout the bloat. They make much
much more noise than they did in the daytime. As the sun sets, hippos prepare to go to work. The temperature drops to 18 degrees Celsius. That's 15 degrees cooler than the daytime. And the hippos seem invigorated. The dominant male is first ashore. The bloat follows his lead. meters from water, they get down to business, eating. Hippos only start feeding properly once it's cooler. A short way from the shore, there's much more grass, and hippos need all the food they can get. Fully grown, they can weigh up to four tons. What they eat in the afternoon isn't nearly enough. They need around 50 kilograms of food every day. And that's a lot of grass. When there's less grass during the dry season, it's thought they can walk up to 10 kilometers to find food. Dawn is breaking by the time they slowly wind their way back to the water. Seen leading from the shore onto the plains. They're hippo roads, well worn paths made by hungry hippos. And each bloat has its own road. It's thought hippos walk down the same path to make sure they return to the right territory. Roads have been worn down over many generations. Cameras placed on the path show hippo traffic in action. Bloat walks back to the water in single file. They don't deviate from the path, except to check out the camera. As the hippos return home after a busy night, other animals are just getting started. Ugandan cob lock horns over the right to mate. While a family of warthogs forages for food. The mother kneels to eat. 
As her legs are long, it's the best way for her to reach the grass. Her piglets follow her lead. It's the height of the dry season, and temperatures on the savanna reach 35 degrees Celsius. Escaping the heat is a challenge for everyone. Lions don't usually climb trees. But in Queen Elizabeth Park, they play by different rules. Up in the branches is a good place to cool down. There's a breeze and shade. It's so popular, space is at a premium. Late arrivals often find the best places to spread out have already been taken. Luckily, there's usually room nearby. A padded paw works well as a pillow. The branches don't look comfortable. Neither do the thorns. But the breeze obviously makes it worthwhile. A more frantic crowd gathers at a lake in a volcano crater. Flamingos flock to salt lakes, so-called because of their high saline content. They come to feed on plankton. It's the pigment in the plankton which causes them to get their pink colouring. And the sight of them feeding is one of the Queen Elizabeth National Park's main attractions. There is one part of the park which is very different to the rest of the savannah. Deep in a valley which cuts through the grasslands is a thick forest. Mist sinks into the valley and feeds the trees with moisture. and it's home to some of Africa's most iconic animals. Chimpanzees. There is plenty for them to eat here. But chimpanzees suffer the same problems as animals up on the savannah. trying to keep cool. The humidity in the valley is even higher, but chimpanzees have a way to cope, which hippos would appreciate. They lie on the cool forest floor and do as little as possible. Back at the channel, the hippos relax after their nighttime feast. 
they've developed some special skills from spending so much time in the water. Like spinning their ears. By rotating each ear, they can splash water over their heads. It helps keep them cool and keeps troublesome flies at bay. Sometimes hippos are surprisingly acrobatic too. They kick the bottom of the channel with their back legs and jump. This morning, it looks like the hippos are simply playing. But if they're in danger, acrobatic skills like this can be a lifesaver. October arrives, the start of the rainy season. And with the rain come strong winds. The Kazinga Channel becomes much choppier. Hippos huddle together. They plant their legs to the ground and stand as still as they can. The baby stays extra close to its mother. Other hippos surround them and form a protective wall while they wait for the weather to pass. Rain encourages grass to grow. Fresh grass is good for hippos and many other animals. But not everyone wants to eat it. Black-headed weaver birds weave it to make their nests. It's how they got their name. The entrance to a weaver nest faces downwards so that no rain gets in and chicks stay dry. Another bird is preparing to raise young too. It's the spur-winged plover mating season. The birds get their name from the sharp claws on their wings. And despite their small size, they are notoriously aggressive birds. But their do-or-die nature comes in very useful. A Nile monitor wants the plover's eggs. But the plucky parents won't give them up without a fight.
dive bombing the lizard does the trick. It slinks off in search of an easier meal. Reptiles are out in full force, including one of the biggest of them all. Nile crocodiles have been known to attack hippo calves. And this one is dangerously close to the bloat. The mother pushes her baby down and out of sight. Most crocodiles wouldn't risk attacking an adult hippo. And this one is no exception. Mother and baby rest safe. But more trouble is brewing closer to home. Hippos in the neighboring bloat are facing a leadership challenge and things are heating up. The young male on the left wants this territory and has challenged the dominant male on the right. Battle lines are drawn. But the young male has underestimated his foe. The dominant male forces his challenger underwater. It's too much for the young male to take. He beats the water in surrender. Lowering his head is another sign of submission. But he hasn't given up his quest for power. He slowly swims into the prime territory. But this showdown is even shorter lived. The young male beats a hasty retreat. He escapes the prime territory, but he's still in trouble. He stumbled into the next bloat along the channel. And he's not welcome here either. He's chased off again. And he's burning up a lot of energy. Now he's heading back the way he came. Straight towards the Prime Territory's leader again. This time the young hippo takes a very different approach. He swims in front of the dominant male and beats the water with his tail straight away. All the fight has deserted him. He lowers his head in a final act of submission. The leader opens wide to demonstrate his strength and superiority. A 
loud grunt seals it. The contest is over. It's now late in the rainy season, and mist hangs over the channel. Calves test their strength with more bouts of wrestling. They are around four years old, and their teeth are clearly visible. Their canines start growing when they're around a year old and don't stop. The calves now have a new member of their gang. The baby. And for once, its mother isn't right by its side. The baby seems happy to hang out with the calves on its own. It flaps its tail enthusiastically as a greeting to its new friends. But back with its mother is where it feels safest, relaxing in the calm waters of the Kazinga Channel. Around 5,000 hippos live along the Kazinga Channel in Uganda. Across Africa, many of their natural habitats are being destroyed as people encroach on the land. Some fall prey to poachers too. But here, in Queen Elizabeth National Park, they live in relative safety. As long as they have grass to eat and calm water to live in, hippos will live and breed in the Kazinga Channel, the hippo's paradise. Mm -hmm.